Today I'm going to show you how to implement your animator into your player controller. So basically in our last video, we set up our animations in our animator attached to our player, and then we are going to activate those states via our player controller script. So if you haven't seen the last video and you're kind of lost on this one, then I recommend watching the last video and let's get coding. So let's go to our script. So under assets, we can go to our scripts and then we can double click our player controller. And now we need a reference to our animator component. So under the Collider 2D, we can add private animator animator. So once again, this is the variable name and this is the object itself. And then in our awake function, we can add in animator. We can add in an animator equals get component animator. So this will get the animator component from our object. And then in our movement, we want it to be able to change to that running animation wherever, whenever we're moving. So let's be a little bit neater. Let's make a new function called move. So private void move. And in there, all we're going to do is copy that code we have from our update. And then we're going to paste it in our move. And then all we have to do is in our update is called that move function. So we're just moving around the code. <laughs> Get it? Move. I thought it was funny. But anyways, here is our code now. All we're doing is calling that code and making it neater. And so now in our move function, we can activate our animation. So let's put a comment here, animation. And now if our movement input does not equal zero, then we run. So if movement input does not equal zero, then that means we're moving. Then we set animator dot set bool. And then we pass in the name of our Boolean, which in this case, it's called run, comma, and then we pass in the value true. So we're setting the Boolean run that we set before in our animator to true. And vice versa, else, which happens when this condition isn't met, we set the animator dot set bool and run animation to false. So that will work now with our animation, changing it to run. And then to set our trigger for the jump, we go to our jump function. And if it's in this if condition, so if it's grounded and we press the jump, then it's gonna jump. As you can see here, we add the force to jump. So right under that, we can set the trigger for the jump animation. So we go to animator.setTrigger. And then we pass in that jump name. And if you're new to coding, this is just a string. So we're passing in a string, oops. We're passing in a string to our set trigger and the string is basically the name of our, of the thing we want to trigger. So now if we control S or save it, we can minimize it and now we can play the game and it will change animation states whenever we run or jump. Okay, so we press play and now we're running. And we're jumping. Whee! But there seems to be an issue with our animation. The first thing I can notice is that we have our sprite backwards. So whenever we move left, we want our sprite to be facing left. When we move right, we want our sprite to be facing right. And then our animation stops after a while. It has completed. It does not loop again. So we can go to our running animation under assets animations, and then we can click run animation. And then let's just press that loop time and that will fix that loop issue. And to fix the sprite facing the right direction issue, if you can see under our player, under the sprite render, there's a flip X and Y component. So if you press flip X, it'll flip the character automatically. So we can actually access that value and flip it whenever we're moving left or right. So if we go back to our script, we can add a new component called private sprite render and we can call it sprite render. And then under awake sprite render equals get component sprite render. And then under our movement function, we can under that, we can add a comment called sprite flip. And we can do a simple if statement. So if movement input equals negative one, 
that means we're moving on the left. Then sprite render dot flip x is going to equal to true. Else if movement input is equal to one, so we're moving right, then sprite render dot flip x is going to equal to false. All right, we can minimize that and let's click play. And now we can jump, we can run and it will run both ways. Awesome. And one quick little tip before I go, you can also play with the transitions between states. So if you click on the arrows themselves, it will show you how it transitions from the idle to the run animation and you can preview it in the bottom. So you can actually change where it activates the run animation. So if you want it to activate a little later after you start running, then you would just move the run animation forwards and you can play with the values. You can change the distance between these to change how fast it changes the, the animation. And so that's the end of the video. We've added animations to our player. And so in the next video, we'll be handling collisions. So we'll be making our enemies. And then if we collide with the enemy, then we will restart the level. And we will also add an ending goal. So if you reach that end goal, then you win the game. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. And to be notified for more content, just click that little bell button and you will be notified when new videos come out. Thanks and see you next time.